If you're looking for an espresso maker that you can both take on the road and is on a budget, there are quite a few options out there. So we've narrowed it down to our top four espresso makers that you can take wherever you go. Hello, my name is Stephen Holm and I'm with Home Grounds, a place for you to go to learn more about brewing and enjoying better quality coffee right at home. If you are new around here, welcome. And if you would like to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, that would really help us and it would help you so you can see more content just like this. So today we are looking at portable espresso makers. When I was trying to decide what brewers we would include in this video, there were a few criteria that I wanted them to meet. First off, it needed to be portable, obviously. Now we're not looking for something that is extremely compact and lightweight that say you could take backpacking. This is more if you're going say car camping or going to a hotel and you want to be able to make good espresso there. The second thing we looked for is that they were under $200. There are portable espresso makers that are well above that, but I think that if you are looking for something portable, you probably already have something at home already that you are using and you don't want to spend as much money say at thousand or so dollars on an espresso machine that you're taking on the road with you. The last thing I looked for was that it made an espresso-like beverage. Not all of these make espresso, as some may call it, using nine bars of pressure and coming out with crumb on everything, but they can all make a very small, strong cup of coffee similar to espresso that you can get in a coffee shop. Now a quick disclaimer before I start going over each one, there are affiliate links for each in the description down below. Those don't cost you any extra, but they give us a very small percentage of your purchase that helps support this channel. The only brewer out here that we did not purchase with our own money was the Waikako Pico Presso. I made a video recently about that brewer and Waikako graciously sent me this brewer for free. However, I really do enjoy all of their products and I would have purchased that on my own if they hadn't already offered to send me one for free. So hopefully you can believe that none of this is biased in any way. These are actual products that I recommend and that I would use. So first up is the Waikako Pico Presso. Like I said before, we have a full video review on this brewer and how to use it. So I'll just be talking about more so the portability of it today. And it definitely meets the portability standard. Everything you see here, this is the brewer. It fits in the case right here. It's all $130, which is a little on the higher end for what we're looking at today, but I think for what you're getting, that's a great value. Really quick, I'll go over just how it works. So you see on the bottom here, we actually have a bottomless portafilter basket. So you can observe your shot as it's pulling and that allows you to more so dial in and see what's going on with your espresso as you're brewing it. And if we take this apart, we see that basket in here it includes a scoop we have a shower screen and your water is going to be going through that and dispersing evenly over your coffee grounds. And held in the top here, we have a lot of stuff. We have a dosing ring to help get your coffee in there as well as a tamper. And then also a brush and a distribution tool. So basically you would prepare your espresso in here using the distribution tool, tamping, place the screen over top, and then you just pour water in the top and pump it using this mechanism and it brews espresso. See if I can figure out how to get it all back together here. It's kind of like a little puzzle. Boom. So what things do we love about the Waikako Pico Presso? First off, it is definitely portable. Everything that we just saw that I unpacked from here closes inside there and fits in this little carrying case. And this carrying case is made really well. I would have no worries throwing it in some luggage and forgetting about it. The next thing that we love is that it makes extremely good espresso. Like, espresso just as good as you could get in any cafe. And that's thanks to a few things. First of all, all the tools that you are given in order to help brew that espresso, and also the mechanism here ensuring that you get good, adequate pressure to brew your espresso. The last thing we like is that it's fairly easy to clean, maybe not the easiest on this list, but you would basically just need to unscrew the bottom, empty out the basket, and kind of wipe out all of those parts down there. It's easy to go from one shot to the next if you're brewing for multiple people, and that's a big plus. Now some things that we don't necessarily love about the Pico Presso. First off, it's not the cheapest item on this list, and $130 may seem like a good amount of money for someone to spend on a coffee brewer just to bring on the road, and that is totally fine, but it is definitely a good value for what you're getting. Another thing we don't love is that there's a lot of little 
parts in here. Just a lot of little things that you can easily lose or misplace. And if you're traveling a lot with this brewer, I can see that it would be very easy to lose like that little distribution tool or the tamper or something like that. The last thing that may deter some people from this is that it's not super forgiving. You definitely need to dial in your grind size and your dose and your yield in order to get a great shot. It won't just be throw some coffee in there, hope for the best and get something great. No, you really have to work on the espresso, but that's also an advantage because it allows you higher potential to get better espresso. All right, so the Flare Classic. If you're unfamiliar with Flare, they make these manual lever operated espresso machines that both are meant for your home, but can also be good for traveling. This one in particular is the classic. I believe it's the second least expensive one of their models. Their least expensive one is the Neo, and that is also fairly small, but it is more geared towards beginners and sort of limits your potential of espresso quality. And also it doesn't include a carrying case that we'll see here in a second. They also have much higher end models like the Flare 58, but I think with that model, they're more gearing that towards someone who's actually gonna be using it at home all the time and not necessarily for traveling. And especially at that price point, it's gonna be hard to convince someone to get that just for travel. Now how it works is that we have this big chamber right here and that pretty much houses everything. So if we take off the bottom here, we can see a little shower screen and a basket where you place your coffee. And then we have a cylinder and a piston that goes on top of it. And that's what the lever uses to push down and apply pressure to your coffee. It also does include a little dosing cup that doubles as a tamper. And then there's also a funnel here. So if you were brewing espresso, you would take your ground coffee, place it in this basket here, and then tamp with the bottom of this. Take it out and place the shower screen on top of there. Next, you would take your cylinder, which ideally should be preheated. I just throw mine in the mug I'm about to use to brew into with some hot water and that does a decent job. And you would take that and place it on top of your basket there, pour hot water into the line that you can see, and then the piston goes on and you press. Flare does make a pressure gauge for this so you can watch what pressure you're applying. That is a great little add-on. I didn't include it because it's not part of the standard kit. So what do we love about the Flare Classic? Well, first off, it makes really good and pretty legit espresso. It uses pressure and a proper grind size to brew you an espresso that is very similar to the ones that you could get in a real machine. Next, it's really cool looking and it's a good tactile experience. So you really feel what's going on and you can adjust your pressing and figure out what things are going on in order to brew espresso. And you can bring it out at the campsite and people will flock wondering what it is. The last thing we like is that as well as it being a good travel brewer, it's also good to just use at home. You can set this up right in your kitchen and use it every day versus I would say the Pico Presso is more designed to be traveled with. It doesn't really stand up on your counter like this one does. You can really use this for your everyday espresso and pack it up in its case whenever you want to carry it around with you. Which I forgot to show the case. This is the case for the flare. It is fairly large and that's our first downside is that this is travel portable friendly because there's a case for it, but you're not going to be taking this many places. It's good if you can just throw it in your car if you're going somewhere, but not much past that. The next downside about the flare is that it requires a good amount of effort and a lot of moving parts that you have to figure out how this fits here and what this does and all of that. It's not just as easy as put some coffee in, press and you're good. It really takes a lot to dial in a coffee. And that's another thing is it's not very forgiving. You really have to have your grind size dialed in, your dose weighed out, your yield weighed out. Everything needs to be really dialed in order to get great espresso out of this. The last downside with it is it is the most expensive on our list for $165, but I think for what you're paying, you're getting a very good espresso maker that you can both use in your home or on the road. Next up, we are taking a look at the AeroPress and we're taking that standard bottom basket thing and throwing it out and we are, whoops, and we are trading that for the Fellow Prismo, which is a device that has a valve on here that won't allow any liquid to flow through until you apply pressure on the top, which is good so you don't have to use the inverted method or worry about any drips coming out as you're brewing. They also include this metal filter, which helps produce a good espresso. Now the AeroPress on its own is $40, both for the standard model here as well as the Go, 
which is their more travel oriented model that's slightly smaller than this, but this is still very travel friendly. And then the Fellow Prismo is an additional $30, which I think is well worth it for what you're getting. If you haven't used an AeroPress before, it is fairly easy. You have our water chamber down here that the Prismo attaches pretty snugly on here. We actually have a full video on the Fellow Prismo if you want to check it out. It has a recipe in there and everything. I'll link it right up here. But basically it's just coffee goes in here, water on top, and then you press it through using the top plunger. It's very simple and very quick. So what do we like about the AeroPress with the Prismo? First off, it's very compact and very robust. I've traveled around with this for years and I've never had a carrying case for it, which you can get one, but I just throw it in a bag and it has held up for years. I would have no worries about this breaking or anything like that. And the Prismo is no exception to that. This is built solid, nothing's gonna happen to it. The next thing we love about the AeroPress is it's extremely versatile. You don't only have to brew espresso, you can brew filter coffee, you can brew concentrates and dilute it for multiple people. You're not paying for one brewer that can brew one type of coffee, you are paying for a brewer that can brew many, many different types. The last thing we like is that this is pretty minimal parts. You just have four pieces here that are relatively easy to clean when you're done brewing. You just pop your coffee out, give this filter a good cleaning, and you are ready to go on to your next brew. As far as downsides go with the AeroPress and the Prismo, really the biggest one that may deter people is that I would say it doesn't make true espresso. You aren't able to get the right pressure or use the fine enough grind size to get cafe level espresso. And that's not to say that it's not good, it's just different. So if you're an espresso purist and that's what you're looking for on the road, this may not be the best option for you. Last up is the Mocha Pot, another one that we have a full video of with recipes and everything that I'll link up here. But this is a great brewer. This one in particular is the Bialetti Mocha Express, which retails for $40. There are larger sizes, there's different off-brands you can get for cheaper, but this is a pretty good standard model. If you're unfamiliar with how it works, we have three different sections in here. So we have the bottom chamber, which is where you pour in your water, the middle portion, which you put in your coffee grounds, your water boils down here, goes through the coffee grounds and up into this top chamber where it will exit out and you can pour out your delicious coffee. Now a great thing about the mocha pot is that it is extremely durable. This thing is all aluminum. It's not going to break no matter what you do to it. You can find these in thrift stores everywhere, which is a good way to get one if you don't have one already because they last forever. They're extremely durable and great for travel. Another thing that a lot of people like about it is that it definitely makes a different sort of tasting cup of coffee than any of the other brewers. And that's something that a lot of people really enjoy. It's not necessarily espresso, but it is very good. Another thing we like is it's pretty minimal effort. You are not really doing anything manually except for placing coffee in there. And so you can easily get a good cup of coffee out of this. And then the last thing we really love is that this can be your home coffee brewer as well. It comes in many different sizes from this to ones that are the size of me that are completely impractical, but if that's what you want, you do you. Now downsides with this brewer, first off, like I said before, I'm probably gonna get some kickback for this, but I don't think it makes real espresso. It is not the same thing that comes out of an espresso machine. It is good, but it is not exactly like cafe quality espresso. Another thing we don't like as much is that it's not the easiest thing to clean because after you're done brewing this, it's all gonna be very hot, so you can't clean it right away and brew another cup. You have to wait until it cools down, then you can twist this off, empty out your coffee grounds, make sure to clean everything out good, and then you can do another brew with it. And the last thing that would probably deter a good amount of people from using it for travel is that on top of this, you also need a heat source for it. So as an example, here I have a little portable butane burner that I could set it on and have a flame coming up there to heat up the water in the bottom. You can't just take boiling water and pour it in the bottom. You need to be continually heating it up as it brews. So you could use say a campfire or something if you're camping, but if you're going to a hotel, then this wouldn't really work for you. 
So those are the four brewers that we recommend for budget portable espresso makers. As far as what we recommend, if you are someone that travels frequently and you really care about the quality of your espresso, you wanna get the best tasting beverage possible, I would recommend the Waycaco Pico Presso. It makes delicious espresso and it is extremely small and portable. The price may deter some people, but I think that it is well worth it. If you are looking for something that's not only portable, but also durable and you can use for a few different uses, then I would really recommend the AeroPress with the Prismo. It's a very versatile brewer, can brew you a lot of different types of coffee, and it travels really well. If you have any questions or other recommendations, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy brewing.